Hello and welcome back to Guides.Global and to our discussion about buying property in Bulgaria. Uh, with me today I have uh, Luboff Jones. Luboff is not only a, pra a lawyer practicing in Bulgaria and also in the UK, uh, but also she is the author of our guide to buying property in Bulgaria. So Luboff, welcome. Um, this section is about contracts. We've talked already about the preliminary contract um, and I want to look at very quickly at that, but also at the process of getting from there to the registration of your title. Mm -hmm. So, um, once you have signed, just to recap the process, once you have found a property you want to buy, you will typically sign a reservation contract, you'll pay over a very small deposit, 500 euros for example, and then your lawyer will make all of the necessary inquiries. Once those inquiries are satisfactory, you will then sign a proper purchase contract, preliminary purchase contract as it's called, uh, to commit yourself to the purchase of the property. Correct. Now, i um, already said this, but it's worth repeating, I think, that although that is called a preliminary purchase contract, there is nothing preliminary about it. It is a full legally binding obligation to go ahead and buy that property unless you have any special clauses in the contract which give you a way of getting out of it in certain circumstances. For example, if uh, there is a survey which shows that it's in a very bad condition. Yes, uh, but everything needs to be uh, writing down in the preliminary contract. In the contract, contract needs to be written all the very clearly. Correct. Yeah, very clearly, yes. so that if you are going to exercise that right to cancel, you have the clear legal basis to do it. Yes. But otherwise, if there are no clauses like that, you are committed. And if you don't go ahead, you will lose your deposit. Correct. And will you also face a claim for additional compensation, or is the loss of the deposit everything? Uh, generally, the contract, uh, the, uh, such contracts are gentle, and they say you lose just the deposit. Yes. But uh, some of the developers, for example, if they sell very attractive property and they hold it specially for you, they may put some uh, additional penalties. Yes. This preliminary contract, there are no formalities associated with that. In that this, you can sign it anywhere, you don't need to go to the notary. Yes, and this is the big disadvantage of the Bulgarian uh, legal system that the, this contract is not registered. Yes. Yeah. Um, should the contract be in Bulgarian or can it be in your own language? can be in your own language as well. Is yeah. there any particular advantage or disadvantage to um, that? We uh, prefer if the contract signed with uh, two languages, uh, one original, Bulgarian, and for the convenience of the client, say in his own language, say English uh, language, but prevail always Bulgarian text, yes. because this is the official language of the country. Um, in a contract, there is usually a clause that says which law will govern the contract in the event there's a dispute. Mm -hmm. In a contract to buy land in Bulgaria, is that always Bulgarian law? Yes, almost always. But I've seen on a few occasions that uh, the contract covered by, say, the law of the UK. Really? Uh, <laughs> yes, which is not reasonable. Of course, you are, it's illegal. Uh, this uh, course will be void. Yeah. It should be Bulgarian. It should be system. Bulgarian yes. law because under Bulgarian law, any dispute arising out of land in Bulgaria Correct. is for the exclusive jurisdiction of the Correct. Bulgarian courts. Correct. Okay, um, we talked about deposit when you sign your preliminary mm -hmm. purchase contract. How much is normal? Uh, up to ten percent yep. of the property price. And if you're buying a property that is still being constructed. How do you deal with the rest of the price? Do you normally pay by instalments as the, as the construction progresses? Yes, uh, generally such a preliminary contract would contain the stage payments and the conditions in which uh, the certain sta stage payment is due. And you need to keep up with the payments yes. as requested. Um, when do you pay the rest of the money? So you've paid your 10%, shall we say, on a resale property. When do you pay the other 90%? Uh, if you buy 
the property under construction, so you pay on a generally stage payments on each level of completion. Yeah. Uh, when the developer certifies that he approached this level of uh, completion, then you pay the next stage payment. And generally, in such uh, cases, uh, the final payment is due when the construction is finished. And here you need to be very careful, again, take advice from your lawyer, because um, it's very tricky in Bulgaria which uh, certificate you need to have in order to be sure that the co construction is finished. Uh, so, for are... example, it could be the certificate saying, yes, it is now legal to occupy this property because it, we've inspected it and it's okay. It could be that certificate or it could be a much earlier stage. Yes, it could be only certificate that construction is ready, yes. but it's not dwelling yet. Yes. And you need to be sure that it's become a dwelling. And you really want to make sure it's that, it's that right at the end when everything is in order Correct. before you pay the rest of the money. Now, what about a resale property? So property's already been built, you pay your 10% deposit, I assume that you pay the rest when you get the title and get mm -hmm. keys. Uh, actually, in Bulgaria, you do not pay anything after you sign the title. You pay everything before you sign. Yes. And it's uh, generally on the day when the property will be transferred into your name, you just... Uh, By the notary. Yes, yes. You either pay to the notary, you can make a payment in advance to the notary account, or you just go to the bank with along with the seller's representative and to do simultaneously yes. the transaction. So you would normally get, sign your uh, your title document in front of the notary. Yes. And get the keys and pay the money all at the same time. Yes. Um, what happens if there's a dispute about the contract? Okay, you've bought the house, everything looks great, but you suddenly discover that there's a neighbor who claims to have rights over the property, or maybe there's a great big crack appears in a wall of a new property. How do disputes get dealt with? Uh, first of all, you need to see what is written in the contract and what uh, right you, uh, rights you have after you bought the property, signed the title deed, registered everything into your name and to see whether there are any clauses in the contract that uh, you can hook the developer and to persuade him to finish the work properly. Uh, there are also the guaranteed terms uh, for snuggings as well you can claim on this basis. Uh, okay, let's come back to that. snagging in a second. So, uh, But if there's a dispute, first thing you do is look at the contract. And whatever the contract says is the way that dispute should be dealt with is what will happen. Uh, no, there are a lot of clauses that uh, you can't write everything in the yes. contract. And therefore, you have a general text saying all unmentioned clauses covered by the mm, provisions of the certain law okay. that will apply. Therefore, you place your uh, inquiry or your notification to the developer based upon uh, the legal rights that are given to you by this. Okay. And uh, generally, disputes are dealt with by the courts or do they go to some arbitrator or third party? Um, which is what's the way it works? Uh, generally, the, the courts, civil courts, deals with. And if you have to, no one wants to bring a court case because it's normally a disaster. Yeah. But uh, if you have to bring a court case, um, roughly how long does it take to get from the time when you realize you've got your dispute to the time when you get a judgment? Oof. It's uh, the most difficult question, probably, <laughs> <laughs> how long. Mm. Uh, it's take a long time, yes. not, never less than one year, yes. unless the developer uh, is not interested in the case and has not responded to your claim and you have the judge uh, had a um, uh, chance to write a very quick decision on yes. based upon your claim and evidence that you gave. In such case, you will be uh, finish with the good decision within a few months. Um, let's assume for a moment you don't have a dispute because most people don't get involved in uh, 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 disputes about the property they buy. Um, you will at some point want to sell the property. Mm -hmm. And is that a simple process? Is it more complicated or less complicated than the process of buying a property? 
Uh, for the seller, it's less complicated. You are in a more privileged position uh, because all you need to do is just to provide the buyer with a certain pack of the documents and to, to attend to uh, completion to the transaction of the property, to sign the deed to take the money. Yes. And that's it. Yes, I mean, you basically, know, you only want the money, don't you? Yes. You'll sign whatever's necessary to get rid of yes, the money. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then everything will be on the buyer's shoulders. Okay. Final uh, question on this section um, is that when you get to the point of uh, going to make the final payment, you're going to get involved in paying some taxes, aren't you? Uh, not the immediately. Not immediately, yes. but, it, but this is going to trigger an obligation to pay taxes. Maybe, depend on the type of the property yes. that you hold, whether it's in the name of the company <coughs> or it's in your personal name. Um, that, you know, depends yes. on the circumstances. And absolutely, and the amount of tax that you will have to pay will depend on all sorts of things, mainly the value of the property and the type of the property. But you said earlier on, roughly speaking, if you think 4.5% of the value of the property is the amount you're likely to have to pay by way of miscellaneous taxes. Yes, that's it for the transaction of yes. the property, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a figure that people can be using for budgeting. Yes, correct. Um, you've mentioned snagging earlier on, mm -hmm. and uh, I just wanted to come back to that. When you're buying a new property, we all know that you go to take delivery of the property and you can find that they've not fitted one of the locks or there's a crack in the window or something like that. How does that get dealt with in Bulgaria? Uh, if you find uh, out that your property is not completed uh, to your satisfaction, of course you uh, put the list of snagging in, uh, to the developer attention. Uh, you go <coughs> to the property to inspect with the developer's representative and the best way of dealing with it is to not pay the stage payment. So you don't, you, you don't go and sign your notarial deed until the snagging has been completed. Yes. That's the best way of doing yes. it. Yes, because there's no <laughs> argument there. No. <laughs> no. And what happens if later on, you know, um, a big crack appears in the back wall of the property, a brand new property? Is there any period of guarantee that comes with these properties? Yes, all new properties are coming up with a certain terms of guarantee that have uh, been uh, governed by special law. Therefore, if the snagging appears within this time limit, limited period of time, then you can uh, point it out to the developer and to ask him to rectify the defects. Okay. Then finally, in this section, you've talked about the land registry, um, and you've you've said that when you go to the notary and sign over the title the title of the property into your name, then mm -hmm. the notary is responsible for presenting this to the land registry and making sure that the entries are made in the register. Correct. And the effect of those entries is absolute public evidence that this is your property. You can't challenge the land registry. Uh, correct. Yes. That uh, responsibility of the, the notary, uh, he gives this uh, title deed to the judge who uh, make the special records and the special books at the land registry. And uh, then you receive back this uh, notary deed duly uh, recorded at the land registry. And for our viewers in, for example, the United States, where you use title insurance, this doesn't happen in Bulgaria. It is the land registry that gives a public guarantee of title, so that if there is a problem, it's their problem, uh, and there's no need for any title yes, insurance. Yes, you don't need it, uh, unless you want to, to reassure yourself that you are on the title, you want to ask for the certificate from the land registry, and it produced very quickly. Uh, that you are the a new owner of okay. the property. Lubov, thank you very much. That's the end of that section um, and shortly we will be dealing with the main dangers of buying property in Bulgaria so we look forward to seeing you back soon. If you've liked this please do follow us or like us and whether you do that or not we'll see you shortly. Thank you. <laughs>